everyone, it's Sarah with Gigi Crafts and More. Today I'm bringing you two budget-friendly fall DIYs. First, we're gonna start with this planter that looks like a picket fence. To begin, I started off with jumbo craft sticks. I picked mine up from Walmart, but you can get them from pretty much any craft store. I measured about four and a half inches from the top, made a line with my pencil, and then I used some old scissors to just cut along that line. You want to make sure you use old scissors because this will dull your um, blade up pretty quick. And then just kind of cut slowly along that line so that you don't split the craft sticks. Next I'm going to measure about one half inch from the top and a mark in the middle so that I can create a center point to make that picket fence look. Again, half inch from the top, center point, and then cut to that middle point. For this portion of the project, I used 20 popsicle sticks. Next, using my sanding block from the Dollar Tree, I just sanded all the rough edges down and made those sharp corners more smooth. From the Dollar Store, I also picked up that shadow box you see at the top. It's just a square shadow box. You can pick those up pretty much year round at the Dollar Store. We're gonna use that, sh that shadow box for the base of our project. I measured along the length of that shadow box and then I measured that same number onto the popsicle sticks. You just wanna cut off each end of the craft sticks so there aren't any um, rounded edges. Then I'm just using some sandpaper, actually ended up using 150 grit sandpaper um, to smooth out the corners and edges on these sticks because they kept um, catching on that foam block. Next, we're gonna paint all the pieces. I use this folk art home decor chalk paint that I purchased at Michael's in the color Castle. Now I love to use these little square containers from the Dollar Tree to put my paint in if I'm gonna be doing a bigger project because if I don't use all the paint, I can just put the lid on it and use it for another project. For the shadow box, we're gonna paint the outside edge, the top edge, and that inside edge. I do add two coats of paint to that top edge and the outside edge. The inside edge you won't see once you get your floral foam and your flowers in there. Once you get that all painted, you're gonna paint your jumbo craft sticks. I painted both sides of all the sticks and then added a second coat of paint to one side of each of those sticks. Again, the other side will be faced on the inside towards your flowers, so you won't be able to tell if you only have one coat of paint on it. But if you wanna add an extra coat of paint to both sides, hey, I say go for it. Do what you like to do. Next, we're gonna do a dry brushing technique. I'm using the color Burnt Umber from Apple Barrel that I picked up at Walmart. And I know you can't see it, but what I did was I you, I'm using a dry, stiffer paintbrush, and I'm dipping the paintbrush into that paint. Then I'm tapping off some of the excess into the middle of my palette. Then I'm gonna rub that paintbrush over the top of my project to create streaky lines. This gives the effect of peeling paint It just adds some more dimension and depth to your project, I think. I 
I'm gonna dry brush all of the craft sticks that we cut, including the longer rectangle pieces. Now you can do this technique to both sides. I chose to just do one side and that'll be the side that faces out. And I'm also gonna do this technique on the outside and top edge of our shadow box. Next, we're gonna add the floral foam. Now you can see in the middle of that shadow box, there's still a piece in there. I could not for the life of me get that to come out. I tried a knife and everything. Um, I probably could have used a putty knife. I didn't have one on hand and it might've budged it, but I wasn't gonna worry about it too much. I just added the floral foam over the top of it and it worked out fine. I also didn't glue that in, but you can glue it in if you'd like. Next, we're gonna assemble our box. I added two of the picket fence posts, say that two times fast, two of the picket fence posts on each end of one side of the shadow box. Then I added a third one in the middle. I didn't measure this, but you can if you'd like. Then I added a fourth piece in between the first and second piece and the fifth piece in between the third and fifth piece. Next, we're gonna add one of those rectangle pieces along the edge, the front edge of our picket fence posts. Now you can measure this if you'd like. I just eyeballed it to where I liked it, but all picket fences are different and unique. So you make yours however you like it. I just ran a bead of hot glue across the front of all of those sticks and then added that rectangle piece. You're gonna do the same thing to the other three sides left of your shadow box. This is how it turned out all finished. I added florals from the Dollar Tree and the green boxwood is from Walmart. I love how this turned out. You can change your florals out to fit each season so this can stay out year round if you'd like. It'd be cute to add a little sign or something to the front of your picket fence too. For this next project, we're going to make this cute sign from five gallon paint stir sticks that you can find at Walmart or Lowe's or Home Depot. First, I'm gonna measure out the length of my sign. Basically what I did is I just measured it out to where it started to curve at the end for the handle and cut that off. It was 17 inches. I just used my mat and a ruler to make a straight line so I knew where to cut with my handsaw. I picked up this handsaw from Walmart for about 10 bucks. It's great for small wood projects and I love having it in my craft stash.
Once you get all your pieces cut, you're gonna take a sanding block and smooth out all the edges. Now you'll see that I have five sticks here, and in the end, I end up using six altogether. We're gonna take this apple barrel paint in burnt umber, and we're gonna add a little bit to a dish. We're also gonna add some water to make a wash for our wood. Basically, it's a faux staining technique, wood staining technique, um, a lot less messy than actual wood stain, and it is a pretty cool effect. It allows the wood grain to show through and all those little knots and pieces without all the trouble of a wood stain. So you just mix it up. You're looking for a pretty wet consistency. And here you'll see I'm just protecting my surface. And I'm gonna paint that on to each stick. And I'm gonna wipe off the excess with a paper towel. I'll do that to both sides of the sticks. So you can see that wood grain shining through and the knots from the wood, you can see all that. You want to make sure that you allow this paint mixture to dry really well before moving on to the next step. I laid all six of my stir sticks out and then I placed one jumbo craft stick in between each of those stir sticks to create a small space. Next I'm going to take my Gorilla wood glue and my hot glue and I'm going to place both onto one of those jumbo craft sticks. And I'm going to place it in the middle so that it touches each one of those stir sticks. The reason I'm using wood glue and hot glue is because the hot glue will hold immediately and then the wood glue will hold the piece together more permanently long term. I'm going to flip this over and add some heavier items to the top to secure it until it's completely dry. Next, we're gonna create our frame for our piece. I just picked up this decorative, I think it's like decorative wood for finishing off cabinets. It's about three quarter inch by one inch, and I just cut it with my handsaw. I just picked it up at my local hardware store, and I'm just using a sanding block to smooth out all the surfaces. You could use any small piece of wood to make a frame for your piece. After that, we're gonna use that same wood wash technique on these pieces as well. I'm just doing three sides because that fourth side will be glued down to the sign and you'll never see it. But I do make sure to get my ends because you'll see some of those. Also taking that paper towel and wiping off any excess so that that wood grain shows through nicely. After all that, we're going to assemble the frame on our sign. Using the smaller end pieces, I add those first and secure them with wood glue and hot glue. And then quickly put in my longer pieces so that I can kind of smudge them together in case I needed to so that they have there's a nice tight fit there. You have a little bit of time before that hot glue dries to make sure that you get everything nice and tight. Next we're going to work on our decorative elements that go in the middle of the sign. I'm using spiced carrot from Apple Barrel and a little bit of castle from Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint. I'm just warming up that orange color and with the chalk paint added in, it helps that orange look more like chalk paint instead of just being a matte finish paint. I suggest you figure out what your colors you want each of your wood items to be before you start so that you know what order you need to paint. This is Nantucket Blue from the Folk Art home decor chalk paint. I 
And these were just uh, ornaments, wood ornaments that the Dollar Tree carries. The last color I'm using is sage, and that's also the folk art home decor chalk paint. I added two coats of paint to each of these pieces. Next, I'm gonna use the twine that came in the package with the ornaments. And instead of using them to hang up the items, I'm going to wrap that twine around each one of the pumpkin stems. Just securing in the back with hot glue and then wrapping all the way to the very top with that twine. Again, securing in the back. And that pink thing on my finger is just a silicone protector so that I don't burn my fingers. Next, I'm gonna cut off that little bit of tail that I didn't use. And then I'm going to take a lighter and run it over the top of the twine just to burn off all those little bits and edges and to darken up the twine. Please be careful if you're doing this in your home. I don't want anyone's house to burn down or for anybody to get hurt. So we're gonna do that same thing with each of the leaves stems. Just add some hot glue on the back, wrap the twine all the way to the end of the stem and secure again with hot glue in the back clipping off any extra that there might be. Now, if you don't wanna use a lighter to uh, burn up the edges of your pieces, you could use black paint and a little bit of, um, and a paintbrush to add a little bit of color there, or you could use ink. but please only do what you're comfortable with. If you're not comfortable using a lighter and burning the ends, then please don't. So then I'm going to add some vinyl letters to the fronts of each of these pumpkins. This is gonna spell out Hello Fall. And I cut this vinyl with my Cricut using the font, the skinny. This is just Oracle 651. And the transfer that I'm using is just the uh, Duck brand um, contact paper that I buy in a huge roll at Walmart. It works wonderfully for transferring vinyl. Now I know some people are gonna say, hey, Sarah, I don't have a Cricut and I can't cut vinyl. Well, there's lots of options available for you. You can go to the Dollar Tree and purchase um, a number of different kinds of stickers at the Dollar Tree. Craft stores also have lots of different fonts of sticker letters. Um, you could go to Etsy and um, a lot of times if you request it, people will, um, make custom items for you. So there's lots of options for those of you that don't have a Cricut or a way to cut vinyl. You could also use a paintbrush and paint and hand letter this or a paint pen. Lots and lots of options. Now I thought I was gonna use my ruler to kind of figure out what I wanted here, but I ended up just eyeballing it. But you can measure it, measure it if you'd like. I'm okay if things are off a little bit. But if that's not cool with you, then definitely measure it out.
So because these were ornaments from the Dollar Tree, um, they have a hole at the top of them to hang the twine through. And with the pumpkins, we covered that hole up with the um, twine on the stem, but the hole for the leaves were exposed. And I didn't really wanna add any um, wood putty and cover it up. So what I did was I took regular twine from the Dollar Tree, double knotted it, and then cut off that longer end right close to the knot. Then I cut a piece that I could thread through the hole. And I just pulled that knot tight. And secured the back with hot glue. I took the lighter to the front part of that as well to darken up that twine. And you'll do that to each one of the leaves. Now the last part of my tutorial got cut off. So I don't have video footage of showing me how, showing you how I added the pumpkins and the leaves to the sign. But basically what I did was I added the two end pumpkins, the H and the O, and then added the L in the middle. And then I added the E and the L overlapping on top of the other three pumpkins and hot glued the fall down at the bottom. I just adore how this turned out. I love the colors and I love the pumpkins and the leaves together and the little bit of twine. I'm gonna use command strips to hang mine up, but you could use twine or a sawtooth hanger. Out of these two projects, which one did you like best? Comment down below and let me know. Thank you for joining me today. I can't begin to tell you how grateful and thankful I am for you. I hope you all stay safe and healthy. And if you get a chance, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, bye.